Hi guys and welcome to this painting that I've been working on for almost two months now on and off. Today I want to talk a bit about painting fast versus painting slow. Some of the things that I've found that are beneficial one way or the other. Normally I paint very fast. I usually work in watercolors so I'm able to get things done in one day if it's less complex and then multiple days if it's a little bit more of a complex piece with a lot of things to paint. So I'm typically pretty used to just cranking things out and getting them done. And I think in a lot of ways, it's kind of built some really unhealthy habits. I think art wise, I tend to be very impatient with my work and I don't spend as much time on these little things that I used to love as I used to, because I, I realize now that I'm kind of trying to be as efficient with my time as possible accidentally. And uh, now that I've started working in oils, it's kind of given me like a shock to start working in a very different pace. So I, I really do want to talk a little bit about that, about some of the things that, that I'm starting to realize. And I hopefully some of these things that I realized are things that maybe you experience or or are going through and maybe not necessarily have even realized. I feel like that's really where I was at with a lot of these where it's like, oh, I, I didn't realize that's kind of how I thought or how I felt or how I behaved when it came time to paint. So, so yeah, hopefully this will be enlightening for, for all of us. But, but I found that this painting, like I said, I, I started it, I believe two-ish months ago, this painting, was originally intended to be done really quickly. That was right as I was thinking about getting into oils and I had just bought all the supplies. Well, I suppose after I was thinking about getting into oils, but I, I started working on it. I realized that I just, what I wanted to do with oils was something that really needed a lot more layering and therefore time to let it dry. So I realized that that deadline that I had originally set just wasn't going to happen. So because I, I kind of missed that original deadline on this piece, it just ended up being one that I would pick up every once in a while and add a little bit more to it and then set it away and then pull it out. And it was so liberating to work on a piece like this because normally I have a very fixed deadline for my pieces. I have to get them done in time to put them up as a YouTube video. So, so for this one, once I, I missed that first deadline, it no longer had a deadline. It was just a piece to be worked on. And there were definitely some pros and cons that I found with this one. I think probably, probably the biggest con is that as I, I, as more time went by, and this is something that I've experienced in the past when I didn't have as set deadlines and I wasn't as great at getting things done quickly, but I, I would start to lose a little bit of a connection with the piece. And I think this is something that a lot of artists feel when it's suddenly it's been a week or a couple of days even where you haven't touched that, that initial spark or that idea, that thing that you were so passionate about before you started it kind of has faded and you lose a bit of that, that end goal in mind. And, and for this piece, there was a little bit there, but luckily I still was able to pick it up and be interested in it. And I think in a large part that was to do with the fact that it was oils and it was new and, and it was this novel thing that I was really excited about figuring out. So that was kind of the spark that just never really died because I was really, really far from figuring it out. So that helped a lot in this particular instance, but it is something that going forward, I think I'm going to have to be a lot more aware of and attentive, especially as I'm working with oils like this, I, I need to be able to see when it's time to recommit and refocus. So I think probably my, my little tip for that would be to, when you start feeling like that, like you're, you're not really passionate about the piece anymore, or you've lost your focus on it. I like to go back to the original sketch and remember what that little spark was in the piece that got me really excited. And a lot of times I like to design things in that make it a little bit special or different or something that I'm just actually very excited about seeing in the final result. And while I'm working on it, I, I know in the back of my head that that's going to happen, but it's really helpful to just go back to the the sketch, the original idea and refresh that and just reaffirm that that's something that I still want and I'm still excited about. So I have to say that's probably the biggest benefit that I have found with working fast, just completing pieces like I do with watercolors where 
I pretty much never get to a point where I lose focus or lose that desire to finish it because it's just, it's still so fresh in my mind. So I don't know, it's, uh, it's interesting to really start to analyze the benefits that you have in certain things that you've taken for granted. But probably the biggest thing that I'm really excited about, about spending more time on pieces is that it allows me to fix mistakes and get to know the idea more and build up on it and make it better. This piece, I, uh, I was mostly liking it at the beginning and then the middle where it has that really green background and her hair ended up being this like pastel blue color. I was not liking it at all. And I was about to give up on it, honestly. I was at a point where I'm like, maybe I just needed to stock this up to being a learning experience. I I painted stuff on here. I kind of figured out oils a little bit more and I'm a little bit better at it, but maybe I just need to move on and start a new piece. But because I had been so long working on it and I was very passively working on it, I could put it away, think about it for a little bit and then bring it back out. And I just didn't stop working on it. I kept putting it away and thinking about it and remembering the problems that needed to be solved. And as I was working on other things, I could go back to remember, okay, that piece that I'm working on that's sitting in my closet, what are some options for, for the certain problems that it's having? And that actually really kept me excited about fixing the problems. And I know this is a little bit of a side note, but that is one of the amazing things that I have found with oils is that with watercolors, once I make a mistake or I change my mind, it's kind of, it's kind of a done deal. There's a pretty limited amount of changes that I can make to watercolors. And with oils, I repainted the background so many times of this piece. I repainted her hair so many times and her face, almost every element in this piece, I ended up repainting. And that was so helpful for me getting into oils and figuring out how I want to be able to spend my time on them. So, so yeah, it's just, it's very, it's very eye opening to be able to see the same piece for a long period of time and then think about, oh, well, I could have done this and I can do this and I can make it better. I, I found that, that when I was working on my assignments in college, we would have several weeks to work on that same assignment. So we would get the initial prompt and the things that we had to put into the piece. And then we'd have, again, weeks to work on it. And I would think about that concept and think about it and I would build more on it and I would make it better as, as I was just thinking about it. And I, I didn't really realize how short I've cut the process down, but I think as with almost all things, there, there are two sides to the coin and you kind of need both. There's the one side where you give yourself no deadlines and this is very general. So, so it doesn't apply to every artist for every piece, but, but if you give yourself no deadline at all, then oftentimes you won't finish things or you won't start things and you won't accomplish those things that you want. But then on the other side, if you give yourself such short, deadlines that you have to get to and you have to get them nice and done and quick, then you're not going to be able to grow in the same way that you would if you gave yourself a little bit more breathing room to develop and to to build up your skills. And I think that's really the side I've been on for way too long. So my plan going forward is to kind of combine the two. I'm going to continue working on faster pieces that I can try to make sure it has an interesting concept and different things that I specifically want to work on, but they can be achieved quickly. And then I'm going to have other paintings like this one that's in the background that I pull out every once in a while that I can add to it and make it better. And I can get that, that uh, creativity out in a different kind of an outlet. And I'm really excited about this. I do think that having both methods, both types of artwork in my life, I think it's going to improve both of them. They're both going to, I think, feed off of each other. But I would love to hear from you guys. What do you what do you think you struggle with the most? Is it not giving yourself deadlines? Is it working too quickly? Is it working way too slowly? And then you lose your your passion for that piece. I would love to hear what you guys do to work through these problems or or anything else that you'd like me to talk about art related. I, I'm always looking for things that, that you're interested in me talking about. But but yeah, I uh, I think that this is kind of a breakthrough for me. I've been kind of grinding for the last few years now and realizing that that maybe I can cut myself a little bit of slack and 
and find ways to to get that joy back into the pieces and not have it quite so mechanical, I, I think is going to really liven things up for me and help me improve in a lot of ways that I've been accidentally stagnant for a long time. And this painting is called Haunting Night and I do have her available as a print as well as the original painting at my shop. I am actually really excited with how she turned out as a print. I think it looks really sharp. So I'm, I'm really excited to be able to offer her as a print. There is a link down in the description that'll take you over there so you can check out the print listing or the original painting. And uh, I do have a link to my Patreon, which is a wonderful way to help support me and the channel and the artwork that I do. I am incredibly grateful to all of my patrons over on Patreon, but, but yes, those links are all down below. And I do have links to the stuff that I use to create this painting. And that is about it. So I will see you guys with my next video.